Hi there commanders, Guardian E here with another Azure Lane video and what I would call a pretty rare site. We've got a set of dev notes from Yostar and Manju. We've got Minato R&D Notes Volume 3 Dockyard. We're going to go through this together. It was posted uh, just today on Weibo as well as Billy Billy, and it goes through essentially a number of pretty big updates that are incoming for the game in the next couple of months. Uh, some surprises here and there, some definitely great quality of life changes. So I wanted to run through it together with all of you. Um, just to kind of cover everything. Uh, apologies for the quality on this. I don't know why Google Translate destroyed the quality on this first image, but uh, we will we will make do. So uh, part one is for the UI and function optimization. So from the R&D team, in order to help commanders understand the version content more intuitively and conveniently, we have optimized the announcement system, including adding richer graphics and text presentations, more detailed tab classifications, the function of jumping to corresponding activity content, etc. This optimization will be implemented later this month. So it says later this month, there are only like four or five days left in the month. So is this going to be part of the next uh, the next event update? Uh, maybe, uh, possibly. Uh, that's what it makes it sound like. Um, but this looks pretty slick overall. I, I do have to say that this was probably a pretty necessary change and update to the game. As it currently stands, we get so many different like little mini events at the same time in the giant scroll bar on the side. Uh, when you go into the events uh, menu. And then additionally, there's a whole bunch of stuff, usually when an event is running, that's not even on this screen. Usually there's like little buttons on the main menu that you have to tap to to specifically access those things. So, And then there's like more buttons on the bottom. So I do like that it, it looks like they're trying to streamline this a little bit, uh, like add more tabs, make it a little bit more sleek and modern looking. And then Saratoga here, great. After the announcement system is optimized, commanders can more easily go to activities they are interested in. Yep, okay, that sounds good to me. Next up, email optimization related progress. So this is with respect, of course, to the in-game mail, and they are optimizing it. So uh, the optimization of the mailbox function that commanders are most concerned about is currently in the final stage of development, expected to be available to everyone in May. So we're going to have to wait until May for this update, but the optimized mailbox is going to allow a storage room. So the materials and oil in the mail will be stored in the storage room of the mailbox after being collected, when the commander needs it, they can uh, take it out of the storage room at, for use at any time. So if you're like me, where I have like 400 unread mails, uh, and probably somewhere close to like 500 cubes, and like God knows how much oil and, and coins in my mailbox just for a rainy day, um, you can just collect all of it, and then uh, that, that'll go into a temporary storage so you can tap into it when you need to. So that's actually pretty nice. And then a collection room. In response to commemorative email collection issues reported by many commanders, we will also launch a collection room. Commanders can later uh, put marked emails into the collection room for collection. So this is pretty great for any milestone emails that you might want to hold on to, uh, just for funsies, uh, different event emails, maybe Akashi's congratulatory emails, and of course the Valentine's emails. I think that's a big one. If you want to keep all of your Valentine's messages together, uh, I think the collection room is a great addition for that for sure. Uh, in addition, the commander can specify oil, merit, cube, diamond, uh, so gem, and material as filtering options and perform one-click collection, one-click deletion. Uh, so you can like select multiple um, based around uh, the criteria and, and filter basically the mail by a criteria and then delete them all or collect them all at one time with one click rather than having to scroll and navigate through the entire mailbox. And that's a pretty welcome addition right there. Uh, the mail that the commander is most concerned about can be stored and accessed in a un unified way so you no longer have to worry about mail overflow. So very nice there. Uh, part three here, we have interface and interaction enhancements and optimization. So some time ago, we started the overall optimization of the main interface. We are still in uh, intensive preparations and are expected to complete the launch in May. The optimization will include expanding the vertical painting display area. So the, I guess for, for certain screens, like making accommodations for the larger screen area and adjusting the overall visual style, optimizing the corresponding interactive experience, etc. It is hoped that the commander can better appreciate the characters and costumes on the signboard. And I think that just means the main, the main menu, the lobby effectively. Um, P.S. After the new main interface is launched, the existing main interface will also be retained. The commander can switch according to the usage habits. So if you hate the new UI, if you hate how the new uh, lobby looks, you can just switch back and forth. I have to say, especially with the whole um, project identity thing, that UI is like super slick. It's, it's very clear that they've been working on like more responsive, cleaner interface in general. So I'm kind of eager to see what they do here because if they carry over some of that stuff, which I'm sure they will, 
um, it's going to look really nice. And But if you hate it, <laughs> you can always... It's nice that you have the option to go back. I mean, to me... I, I'm interested in kind of like moving forward rather than moving back. Obviously, they could make some really drastic changes that I hate um, <laughs> and that I would want to go back to. But I guess I am curious, you know, if you do have this legacy format where you can go back to the old menu, hopefully it doesn't take up a lot of space because uh, I got to say, the game is really bloated as it is. So if they can cut things, I would uh, to kind of ease up on the size restraints, maybe that would be better. Um, but maybe it doesn't take too much space for the, for the main interface to be... Uh, swappable like that. Um, Saratoga, the optimization of the main interface based on feedback from many commanders is already underway. We're looking forward to the final visual effect. All right, note four here, optimization related to the secret language system. So this is the actual like secrets ASMR system that's here. So the secret word archives launched last year has been loved and praised by many commanders. We have also received some suggestions from commanders feedback and will optimize the secret word system as follows. So they've, they're adding a playback bar, a progress bar and a loop mode, single and sequential loop. So you can loop one or multiple of the uh, episodes it looks like, switching to improve the experience itself. So. For those that may not be aware, currently there's no control. Like once you start it, it basically runs its course, and you can't pause it or or really do anything, uh, as far as I know. So, um, just having like basic uh, functionality of, of of pausing, rewinding, and looping, and things like that uh, is is certainly nice. And also, a new background playback function is added, and subsequent commanders will be able to play secrets uh, in the background in the main interface. So while you're in the lobby. Uh, it looks like right down here in the corner, there's the ability to actually play the ASMR while you're in the main menu. Uh, Saratoga, while optimizing the secret word system, we will continue to bring new secret word plots to the commander on a regular basis, which they've been doing pretty... They could probably do it a little bit more aggressively with the release schedule, but uh, it's pretty nice, especially for, I think, the release schedule as it is helps free-to-players uh, be able to get those secret tickets to acquire the limited um, secret conversations and ASMRs rather than them having to spend gems, so that is pretty nice. Okay, part five. Now, this one is huge. Meta character special doc and how to obtain past world tour characters and costumes. So where it says world tour, I think that means cruise pass. So any skins specifically and any meta characters that were tied to past cruise passes, um, in general, are uh, and cruise missions and everything. Uh, they're they're adding new ways to acquire those units and of course meta characters getting a special doc that's not going to take up space in your uh, main doc. So we expect to add a separate unlimited capacity special character. Uh, for meta characters in May. Afterwards, all meta characters will enter the special dock, will no longer occupy the existing dock. For commanders regarding the acquisition of meta characters and costumes from previous uh, World Tour or cruise passes, we will also make arrangements for your appeal in the future, commander, so please wait patiently. So, no details on how to acquire them, we just know that they will come back. Saratoga here. Uh, although there are a few words, there's a lot of information. Uh, these are the two questions that uh, we receive more feedback on daily. It is confirmed that it has been arranged. Refer to Commander. Uh, Commander, please rest assured. So they are taking a look at that. So th again, this is enormous. Uh, this has been a big complaint, I think, especially for people that uh, are completely free to play and, and rely on those free gems for dock expansion and things like that. The meta characters take up a lot of space now that we have so many of them. And so uh, you can't even retire them. Uh, that's been a big complaint, and they're going to have their own dock now, which is awesome. And they still, you know, meta characters still have value outside of being able to play with them, but also, uh, and, you know, obviously interact with them, but um, also just, you know, adding to the whole fleet um, fleet power and everything like that. So again, pretty, pretty huge. Um, part 6, the arcade permanent content update. So they are going to be updating the, uh, the Manju Arcade since the launch of the arcade. We have seen many commanders participating in it, in the challenge of the minigames, therefore we also plan to launch a minigame, uh, add more minigames, and add redeemable rewards simultaneously. So they're going to be updating not only the, uh, the actual minigames that are in the arcade, but also the reward system too. Uh, Juju Gamehouse, a super mysterious landmark in the port area. There are often, once the commander goes in, he just can't get out! <laughs> Okay, and here's the second page of the R&D notes for Volume 3. Again, I apologize for destroying everybody's eyes with the uh, the quality of the previous image. I don't know why it was like that. Um, so Part 7, they're adding a standby function, so an idle function to the game. So in order to better accompany the commander in daily life, we will launch a new standby function in May. The commander can enter standby function after staying on the main, the main menu, the lobby of the game, for a certain period of time without any uh, operation or interaction. The standby function will display the current date, time, and device power. At the same time, you can check the secretaryship, military commission progress, construction process, 
uh, progress at any time. I hope that the launch of this mode will allow commanders to feel a deeper company of Minato. Um, this is a surprise that even Little Gaga didn't expect. Uh, Saratoga also being a surprise, so who will be the first person to appear in the commander standby function? Alright, this is a nice little addition. Uh, so it, basically, if I'm reading this right, if you're on the main lobby screen and you idle for too long, uh, it'll just change the actual display so that it shows sort of the most pertinent information at a glance, um, including, you know, progress on commissions and constructions and secretary ships and everything else, so, um, so it, that's kind of nice. Okay, so this is another huge one, part 8. Dorm system is under development. Many commanders have expressed the hope of having a more intimate interaction with the characters, so we have also specially planned a new dormitory system, which is expected to officially launch in this year's anniversary edition. Uh, and I believe that they are talking about the Chinese server anniversary, just because uh, they released these notes uh, for the specifically the Chinese server, so I would expect um, everybody to get all of the updates at the same time, but when they're talking about an anniversary, they're talking about the Chinese anniversary. Um, by then, characters will be added to the system one after another and open an exclusive room so that commanders can interact more closely. So, this is really huge. It's actually, as you can see here, I mean, this is obviously a preview image. Picture only shows the screen under development, does not represent final quality. But still, when I heard that there were going to be 3D models in the game, I assumed that they were going to be, like, chibi 3D models, kind of like Blue Archive. Not like a full-blown, you know, complete 3D model like Sirius here, which is awesome. And again, this is in development, but you can kind of interpret how this is going to play out. So you've got the collection button at the side. There's a commander, so a camera view, so you can actually have full control over the camera, probably to zoom in and out and swivel around. Um, up here in the corner is an affection or stamina system, something like this. It looks very similar to the project identity with TB. And so again, you can see the carryover of some of the UI elements and the stylizing and the modernization uh, of some of those key features um, in here too, which is which is nice. Yeah, I'm I'm super curious about how they're going to implement this and how it's going to go, um, and how they're going to pick which characters. Again, you know, in terms of the rollout, there are like 700 ships in the game. So who, how are they going to pick and choose who gets added and how? difficult is that going to be um i'm super excited for the mode but i am curious how they're gonna you know how they're gonna work in this kind of separate dorm system for specific ships but um, but again this is absolutely huge adding 3d models uh, of the ship girls ever since you know, basically crosswave uh, was the last time we had really full 3d models as well as of course you know the um, the VTuber segments from the the Chinese server too, but yeah, I mean this is this is pretty enormous. I mean, there's some speculation about um, them kind of using this as a sort of a launching pad into Azure Promelia and possibly getting putting ships in Azure Promelia, which of course is the next Manju game, right? That's going to be coming out. That trailer released took the world by storm uh, as an open world concept. Of course, I'm really excited to check out that game and cover that game as well on the channel if I can and if there's interest in in me doing so. Um, but yeah, I, I would say that maybe that's the case, although they've been pretty explicit about the fact that um, Azure Lane and Azure Promelia have two completely separate development teams from an, from a design perspective. I don't, I don't know, but definitely, um, definitely interesting. Definitely interesting leads to a lot of curiosity, right? Uh, so again, this issue of Port R&D Notes ends here in the follow-up. Uh, we'll continue to work with the R&D team to bring high-quality game content and experience to the Commander. If you want to know more, please leave a message or tell Little Gaga via private message. See you next time. So tell Saratoga what you're looking for. But definitely a lot to look forward to in the coming months. I'm definitely happy to see these notes. I feel like they, sh they could release these a lot more often because we'd love to see them. And definitely a lot to chew on, a lot to look forward to in the coming months as well. Alright, so let me know down below what you think about the new dev notes and the announcements and what's incoming. Uh, what's your favorite part? What are you looking forward to the most? And uh, if you're looking forward to the upcoming event that's hitting on the 28th, uh, I'm going to try to put out a, a video on the 28th um, for the day one polls and, and skin reviews if I can. That's actually, I'm actually leaving uh, on my trip to Japan. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I put out a, a community post just announcing that I am taking a trip to Japan at the end of this month for two weeks, so it's going to be a little bit more sparse on the content on the channel, so I do apologize for that. Um, but hopefully while I'm out there, I'll be able to capture a lot of fun moments and locations uh, surrounding the games that we cover on the channel. Really, really looking forward to that. But uh, but yeah, so I'll do my best. We'll see how it goes. Um, but certainly let me know how you're feeling about the upcoming event. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, subscribe to the channel for more Azure Lane content. We thank you all so much for watching, for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. 
And until next time, let's protect those waters. <laughs>